in. Where'd you get them? How'd you get them? Way up north in a house that's new. There were four with me, your big feet and you. From your ankle up, I'd say you sure is free. From that down, you just too much feet. Your feet's too big. Don't want you cause your feet's too big. Can't you use you cause your feet's too big. I love you cause your feet's too big. Some vacation, not one cute guy, and now we've got this dead forest thing. Animal control, this is George Henderson at 410 Forest Drive. Listen, um, on the way back from our vacation about an hour ago, I hit an animal on Interstate 5. Well, it was an accident. It, it ran out in front of the car. Uh, anyway, uh, I brought it home, and I need you to send a van to come pick it up. A big van. <laughs> oh, that poor creature. I'll never forget the look on his face when we banged into him. <laughs> they need to know what kind of animal before they'll come pick it up. Tell them it's Bigfoot. There is no such thing as a Bigfoot. Sure, not anymore. Dad just killed it. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, to tell you the truth, I'm really not sure what it is. <laughs> well, it, of course, it's dead. I know a dead animal when I see one. Well, I took his pulse. It's nothing. Dead. Deceased. I mean, this is a late animal. Why do you have to know what it is? Tell him it's Bigfoot! All right, you want to know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. It's Bigfoot. What? Called me a lunatic and hung up. Oh, great. Now we have to spend the night with a dead thing. Oh, no, we won't. Uh, your father will just take it to animal control himself. Oh, Johnny. Great. Great. Dad, don't take it to animal control. This is Bigfoot. Call the newspapers. Call the TV station. No, thank you. I have an aversion to being a laughing stock on the 11 o'clock news. Uh, I'll be back in an hour. Rather do this thing. Have a nice hot bath. Oh no. It's gone. It's gone. What's gone? The thing we tied to the roof of the car. It's gone. He couldn't have gotten very far. He's dead. Not anymore. Uh, 911, this is George Henderson. Uh, I'd like to report a wild animal loose in the area. No, I don't know what kind of an animal it is. It's just wild and loose. It's hairy. <laughs> it's dead, but now it's alive. <laughs> no, I haven't been drinking. Well, when it eats its first innocent victim, don't call me, all right? <laughs> Thank you. We'll be waiting. <sighs> okay, it's in the hands of the authorities now. So, what do you say we all go out and finish unpacking the car? <laughs> I'm sure it's probably miles away by now. You were also sure he was dead. Well, if it'll make you happy, I'll go check. No more Mr. Bigfoot here. Can we finish unloading the luggage now?
The least you could do is pick it up. I didn't knock anything down. Why always blame it on me? Because you're there. Why don't you two stop by and Sarah pick it up? Why me? Because you're there. Yes, this. I love it. Everybody all right? I'd be a lot better if I knew where that thing went. Where's Ernie? Ernie, where are you? I'm in the closet. Oh, good thinking, honey. Are you okay? Sort of. What do you mean, sort of? Come on out. I can't. Why not? I just can't. That's all. Look, Ernie, come on. This is no time to fool around. Come on out. Make any sudden moves. I'll handle this. Stop! I him mine. Ernie. Uh, you give Ernie me. Ernie me what? Hand over my brother, you hairy creep. <laughs> Sarah, you're just making him angry. Let me try. All right, we're just, we don't want to hurt you. Just a little confused and a little bit upset. I really don't want to hurt anybody or anything. So, could you just please give me back my son? Hello to the Henderson. Bigfoot, you're real. You, you exist. I was right. You can put me down now. Down. <laughs> He's incredible. He sure is. Where did you find him? I mean, I. How did you get him here? <laughs> I have so many questions to ask. I just have one. Who are you? <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm Walter Potter. I'm from Animal Control. Oh, so you're the one who called my husband a lunatic. No, no, no. No, that was Mr. Hecht. See, we get lots of Bigfoot calls, but I'm the only one who ever follows them up. Amazing. An upright, skeletal, and muscular structure Definitely a hominid subspecies. Great earring. Yeah, you, you put that back? That's a genuine Tacoma Indian pillow there. <laughs> bless him, bless us. We're probably next. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. It's okay, he's just exploring a new environment. How do you know so much about him? Well, I'm a cryptozoologist. I knew it. I just knew it. I knew it right away. Uh, what is a cryptozoologist? Mother. We study legendary beings, like, um, 
Like Sasquatch here and the Loch Ness Monster, Chinese Wild Man. Oh, I get it. You're a nut. George, you may be able to help us deal with him. I I'm going to try and communicate with him. Everybody just stay back. Oh, that's probably Bigfoot for hello. Uh, no, no, uh, actually, I'm purring. See, purring is a non-aggressive sound, lets him know I want to be friends. Yeah, everybody, everybody purr. This is insane. George, you want us to purr. Well, I do not purr. You make it a man of here, Daddy. Oh, this is an historic moment. Great, now can you get him out of here? Hey, wait, look, he's bleeding. Oh, no. He's been shot. What kind of a world is this? The greatest find of the century and some, some bloodthirsty Yahoo wants to turn him into dog food. Oh, doesn't it just make you want to slap that Yahoo, silly? <laughs> Can be okay? Well, we've got to call the vet. Oh, no. Well, we can't let anybody know he's here. Before you know it, he'll be, he'll be in a cage, he'll be tested and gawked at, he'll have his blood drawn and his brains wired. Oh, we have to clean his wound. Do you have any antiseptic? Sarah's got some sick cream. Ernie! <laughs> yeah, I, I said I'd die and I'll get it. Oh, no, you're not going to put that sting stuff on him. He's not going to like that. <laughs> this is going to sting a little, but if it hurts too much, squeeze this. were finished, the emperor looked in the mirror and thought himself quite splendid. Oh, look, Ernie just adores him. And so believing he was dressed in the finest of garments, the emperor marched in grand possession, naked as a newborn babe. See, here's the emperor. These are his buns. <laughs> this is a kid's book, so I don't really show anything. <laughs> you know, what guys got? But I drew him in, down here. Ernie. What'd you say? Ernie. That's me, that's me. Mom, Dad, he just said my name. No, that's impossible. No, really. Come on, say it again. Come on. Ernie. Come on, Ernie. Oh, please, get a girlfriend. No, really, he said it. Oh, honey, it was probably just a grunt or something that kind of sounded like your name. Who's that? Maybe it's Walter. Harry and the Hendersons will be right back. The police! The police? Dad, remember what Walter said? We gotta hide the big guy. Uh, just a minute, officer. We're all uh, getting out of the shower. Uh, quick, Ernie, Ernie, get him back in the closet. What? What? Hey, open up. All right, uh, we're almost all dry now. Come on, come on. See, I'm in the closet. Come on. <laughs> You. Is everything all right in here? Fine, fine. Fine, fine. <laughs> Mind if I have a look around? Fine, fine. Fine, fine. <laughs> fine. Why do I have to look around? Why do I have to look around? You call the cops, the cops come out. Cops come out, cops look around. I'm a cop. I'm going to look around. It's logic. <laughs> Who was 
that? What was what? A growl. I heard a growl that came from behind that door. Growl? In the closet? No, no. Uh -huh. What happened here? Uh, turn right. Uh, large. Hurry, hungry. Yeah, go to fumigate Monday. <laughs> Fine. Oh, officer! Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it illegal to search a person's home without, uh, oh, what do you call it? Probable cause? I have probable cause. You called us, remember? Oh, right. Let me give you folks some advice. Air out that closet. Oh, certainly will. And may I say, you have a lovely copside manner. <laughs> no, Betsy. I just came from the studio and saw the police car. What happened? Aren't you Samantha Glick, the little gal from the TV news? I'm the video journalist who happens to be a woman. My four-year-old daughter is a little gal. Uh, whatever you want. It's okay with me, toots. <laughs> Nancy, why is this cop here? Oh, we thought we saw a wild animal, but it was probably just a shadow. A hairy shadow. Must be a full moon. I just taped an interview with a guy who claims he shot a Bigfoot. Yeah, there's all kinds of loonies out there. <laughs> you and me, babe, we see the underbelly of this city. <laughs> Thanks for coming by and checking up on it. What are neighbors for? I think he meant me. <laughs> Sarah, turn on the TV. My spot will be on in just a few minutes. I look great. New cameraman. <laughs> I'll check it out. Night. Nice. So, anything juicy happen on the beach tonight? No, just bank robbery, warehouse fire, two attempts to Coast Square? Yes, but your furry friend had a very close brush with the police. Yeah, too close. So we got to get that thing out of here now. No, Dad, he's my friend. So is Frankie Palumbo down the street. But we don't let him live here with us. I never get anything I want. Oh, right, like all the kids on the block have one of these. Come on, Bella. i got to take you back to the forest primeval now. Come on. Major problem, George. He doesn't want to leave. Aww. Aww. Oh, come on, let's just get back to reality here. I mean, he, he got to go. This isn't a big house. I bought this house for four people and a pool table. I mean, you just wouldn't fit in here. Now, besides, he needs the great outdoors. He needs the, the sky and the sun and the nippy afternoons chasing rabbits and squirrels. Am I right? Yeah. You must miss your family. I mean, I bet they're worried sick. I mean, Nancy starts calling the morgue on ten minutes late. Right? Tell them. Well. Yeah, see? <laughs> All I'm trying to say is you can't stay here. Do you understand? I don't think he understands. Daddy, it's something on the TV. It was the Bigfoot, all right. And I almost got it. <laughs> right in my sights. Then a spotted owl flew in the way. So I just had to shoot him first. <laughs> but I got off a, a shot at the Bigfoot. I'm sure I winged him. Uh, Mr. Baldwin, what is the fascination with Bigfoot creature? Most people say he doesn't even exist. Oh, he doesn't exist? He doesn't? He exists. Those ignorant scientists may tell you different, but I saw him. I shot him, and the next time, I'm gonna kill him. There you have it. Booker T. Baldwin, a man with a mission. Slime bag. <laughs> well, you better get moving if we're going to beat the dawn. <sighs> Ernie, believe me, in the long run, it's for his own good. Yeah, I heard that before. No, no. Ernie, 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 listen to me. Now, listen to me. He's better off in the woods. I mean, he knows every nook and cranny of that forest. I mean, let me explain. Number one, it's his neighborhood. Right? Number two, 
No one will ever find him there. Number three. Number three. And this is the most important. <laughs> he can stay. Oh, wonderful. Oh, did you hear that, big guy? You can stay. Just temporarily. Now, just until his leg heals. Just don't eat any of my things, okay? No, oh, on behalf of the entire Henderson family, I want to welcome you as our guest. He actually said it. <laughs> Outstanding! <laughs> Stay tuned as Dick Van Dyke leads the campaign to win $25 million for his town, but not without resistance. To do it, the whole town has to quit smoking cold turkey. Nightmare. We were we were driving back from our trip just like we did yesterday. Yeah. Only our uh, our car hit a Bigfoot and we killed it and we brought it home. Only it wasn't dead. And then this is the, the scary part. My me, George Anderson, Dopus Delect. I said they it could, could live here. Wasn't a nightmare. We have a Bigfoot living in our house, don't we? <laughs> Just temporarily. <laughs> Whatever possessed me to say this thing could stay with us. Nancy, don't get too close to him, honey. George, honey, if I were any farther away, I'd be bandaging him by remote control. <laughs> hey, big guy, you're already getting a nice, thick scab. Honey, <laughs> I'm trying to eat. I look at eat with this thing sitting here. All right. There we go. All bandaged. Okay, I think we can all have breakfast now. Mm. Uh, he's making me nervous. He's giving me a very weird look. Oh, George, don't be paranoid. He's giving all of us that weird look. <laughs> oh, that's supposed to make me feel better? Yeah, I can just see the headlines in the supermarkets now. Bigfoot eats Seattle family for breakfast. Oh, George, don't be so melodramatic. Not a breakfast person. <laughs> oh, no, 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 not that bird. George, he's my favorite bird. Well, that's the first sensible thing he's done since he's gotten here. No, uh, no don't eat my fur. No, no, no. I, I, oh, bird. No, 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 don't. Put it in there and see. Oh, no. Hide the big guy. George, well, where are we going to put him? Well, I don't know where you're supposed to put him. Take him out in the bath. You, Samantha, Samantha. We'll be right there. We're just uh, caulking the sink. <laughs> Ernie, take him in the backyard, please. Come on. Come on. He won't go. Oh, here. Come on. You want some green stuff? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. Ugh. 
Good morning, Henderson. Hi, Samantha. Ooh, great suit. Oh, thank you. Now, Tiffany wanted you to hear her sing a song I just taught her. Are you ready, honey? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Oh, wasn't that wonderful? It's gripping. That was cute, Tiffy. Oh, we'll do it again for Sarah, sweetest. Uh, that's okay. I'm going to go upstairs and uh, try to factor some prime numbers. Primo, by the by, yesterday, in town, cultural festival, nude pics, artist busted, obscenity charge, big fun. Samantha, why are you talking like that? Like what? Like a telegram. Good, you noticed. <laughs> I'm trying to develop a signature news style. Short, punchy, sound bites, sort of like Ernest Hemingway doing News 11. <laughs> what do you think? Straight talk. Any good? Needs work. <laughs> no! Hi! Oh, no! Oh, gee, I better get down to the studio. Tiffy! They want me to do a follow-up story on yesterday's Bigfoot sighting. Oh, Bigfoot sighting. Big, Bigfoot sighting! Bigfoot sighting! What would you want to do a story about a Bigfoot sighting? Oh, huh. <laughs> named Harry. She's lying. <laughs> oh, I know. Tiffy's been inventing imaginary playmates ever since you-know-who filed for you-know-what. <laughs> no, no! This one's real! He's Dick and Harry! That's nice, dear. Maybe Harry can come over and play sometime. Oh. Okay, come here. Hey, come on, we gotta go. <laughs> Time and daycare wait for no man. Or woman. <laughs> Hey, look at this. It's only the first day, and already this, this Harry is taking over our lives here. Hey, Dad, you just called him Harry. That's a great name for the big guy. Harry. <laughs> I like it. We'll christen him Harry. Yeah, well, if we're going to christen him, I'd like to whack him over the head with a bottle of champagne. Is <laughs> that late? Oh, well, I've got to be at the airport in a half an hour. I've got an exchange student coming. Oh, what part of the world this time? Uh, Italy. Fabrizio Polini. I've got the perfect family for him. The Yamamoto's. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Hurry, everybody. Oh. All right. Bye, Harry. Harry. What are we going to do about Harry? <laughs> You can't leave Harry alone in the house. I mean, who knows what he'll get into. Mom, the school bus is here. I don't want to be late. Oh, all right, all right. Hang on. No, while your father solves this problem. Me? <laughs> well, of course you. I've got to be at the airport in half an hour. Fabrizio doesn't speak any English. I have a major presentation to make. <laughs> don't look at me. I have track practice this morning. Oh, no, 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 no. No lying about being sick. Mm -mm. You'll have to call the office, George, and tell them you've got car trouble. <gasps> What's the difference between that and calling me in sick? It's an adult thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Ernie's having trouble putting on his pants. Scarborough is expecting me to make a major presentation this afternoon. All right, all right. All right. Uh, you stay here until noon, and then uh, Sarah will come home for lunch, and you can go to work. And then uh, I'll be done after lunch, so I'll come home and relieve Sarah, who can go to school, and then, well, there, problem solved by Supermom. Let's go. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> this is not the life I had planned. <laughs> Come on, Eric. Come on. Come on, in here. Come on. Okay, here, just sit down. Okay. Now, this is a TV. 
Nice stuff. Now you look. And you watch. Your host, Melanie Harmony. Our guest today is James Marbury, author of Congressional Hairstyles. Probably more interesting than their politics. <laughs> Diamond necklace for only $19.95. It's a rip-off network. You call yourself a wrestling champion? My captain's gonna meet me in the full of arena next! Mr. Marbury, is it true Recreational fishing stats have risen. More people are taking to the sport despite polluted rivers and streams. No, don't mention pollution. Too much of a downer. More people. Yeah, Margaret. Uh, what's the problem? Well, why is he moving the presentation up an hour? Because he's the boss. It's a good reason. Uh, well, listen, I can be there... Uh, I'll be here five minutes. Yeah, tell him I'll be on my way as soon as Sarah gets back. Okay, bye-bye. What? Finish up. We'll just go outside. Here. Just... You sit. No, you sit down. Uh, look, me sit. You sit. Ah, okay, great. You got it. Honey, you're right on schedule. No, I'm not. Coach is making us run cross country today. So I took a detour to tell you I couldn't stay. Bye, Daddy. Sarah, wait. Glad you're still alive. Sarah, I gotta get to work. Sarah, how am I gonna get to the office? Well, I'm not taking you. <laughs> Ernie, what are you doing home? I'm sick, Dad. It's my stomach. It hurts real bad. Listen to the child. Checked him out myself. It's my professional opinion the boy is not well. Who are you, the school nurse? No, I'm a school bus driver. I see sick every day, 40 years of sick. I see cramps, flus, colds, rashes, scratches, infections, ringworm. You name the disease, it's been on the floor of my bus. The boy's sick. That's why I brought him home. Yeah, besides, if I'm home, I can help you keep an eye on Harry while you get your work done. Harry? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It'll be tough, but I think I can do it. Gee, kid, if, if, if uh, your stomach hurts, maybe we should take you to the hospital, have it pumped out. Pumped out? Yeah. Uh, that's messy. Yeah. And then an injection to, to stabilize the digestive fluids? A needle? Yeah. Hey, guess what? I feel better all of a sudden. You do? Yeah, nothing hurts. It must have been that 24-minute flow. <laughs> now, how many cases of faking have you seen on your bus? Plenty, but never as good as this. Well, bus driver, do your duty. Ernie, we'll talk about this later. Nice try, kid. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Nance, I'm so glad you called. Uh, listen, Scarborough moved the presentation up an hour, and Sarah jogged out on me. I need you here right now. Oh, Nancy, don't do this to me. Look, no, I need you here, now. You, well, I, I don't care about Fabrizio. Look, Nancy, this is your husband speaking, and I... Nancy... She hung up. The plane is delayed. She's not coming home. My career is melting. 
Give me a bath. Years, how glad I am to see you. Oh, Sasquatch. Oh, he's great. Great. Come on. Hiya, big guy. How you doing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. He's in tip-top shape. Look, I was wondering, could you do me a little favor? Sure. Could you sit with him for a few hours? Oh, I'd love to. But I can't. I gotta be in animal control in 20 minutes. Well, call in sick. You lie, no way. Well, a little white lie. Well, what's the difference? A lie is a lie, and I don't lie. Okay, well, tell him the truth. And tell him we have a Bigfoot here. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell him. You like the truth? Great. Great. Truth time. We got a Bigfoot in our house here. Okay. Come and get him. All right, well, you made your point. Look, George. Mr. Henderson, I would love to watch him for you, but I can't afford to lose my job. It pays my tuition. Look, I can, I can, I can watch him for you tomorrow. Well, I don't need you tomorrow. I need you today. I'm sorry. Did you change his dressing? Well, my late wife did. <laughs> Good. I'm just going to get him on tape. George, I got here as fast as I could. Oh, Nancy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm out of here. Oh, no, 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 honey. You have to help me hide Harry first. I've got the bridge in the car. I can't leave him there all day. Well, why didn't you take him to the Yamamoto's like you were supposed because to? Because I came here as soon as I could, like you told me to. I have much to the bewilderment of an Italian exchange student is my responsibility. Well, he's more important to you than I am? I didn't say that, George. Honestly, I can't understand how you could be so oblivious to the needs of a stranger to our shores. Oblivious! Oblivious! You were saying oblivious to a man who's been hand-holding an ape all day? I am oblivious. You are oblivious. I need to get to work, and you don't care. I don't care. What are you doing? Anthropology research, domestic fight, oh. very irrational. Put that down somewhere. I'll do something irrational with your camera. Where did he come from? You'll see the Sasquatch. Dio mio, una bestia, una bestia che ha la foresta qui nella casa. Ma che fa qui? Aiuto, dai, correte prima che ci uccide. Did you see that poor, terrified boy? Well, I'm just going to have to get him out of here and calm him down. Nancy, I need to get to work. So do I, George. And my first job is lying to an Italian about a Bigfoot. My mummy. Nancy! <laughs> presentation to make you probably don't want my advice but um i'm gonna give it to you anyway chill out <laughs> <laughs> it's all your fault none of this would be happening if you weren't here we should have left you on the road, like I wanted to do. But no, Nancy said the right thing to do was to bring you back. Ah! Ah! How can it be the right thing when you're ruining my life? Ah! Oh, so what's it to you? Nothing. But I'm going to lose my job. If Nancy doesn't get back in 15 minutes, I don't get to go to work, I don't get to make my presentation, and then what? Am I going to call Scarborough? What am I going to tell him? Sorry, couldn't make it. The house blew up. Ah! You're causing me tremendous stress. I tell you, stretch could kill a guy better than any bullet, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah, like you care. What do you have to worry about? Nothing. All you do is eat and sleep, scratch and sniff. But I have to earn a living. I have to pay for the mortgage. I got to perform on the job. Hey, are you listening to me? At least you could do is have the courtesy to listen. Oh, Harry, don't break the tree. Harry. What are you messing with the tree? Now put the tree back. Okay, it's a bird's nest. I see it now, but... They're moving. No, they're hatching. <gasps> look, there's a beak. God, look at that little guy go. Come on. <laughs> He's 
crowd. Oh. And welcome to the world, little buddy. Oh. Yeah. Oh, 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 here comes his brother. Or sister. Oh, this is great. Well, George, I'm back. I put Fabrizio in a cab, so... You can go to your presentation. Honey, did you know that baby birds are born without feathers? You actually told that pinstripe suit that you stayed home to watch the miracle of bird birth? I told him our basement was flooded. We don't have a basement. But he doesn't know that. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is a tough day. Mm. You know, I think now that we've hired Walter to babysit Harry, everything can get back to normal. Mm. Well, speaking of normal, mm. how about some normal stuff? Normal stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of like that normal stuff. Just you and me, huh? Alone and peaceful, normal stuff. Mm. Sweetheart, mm. there's something I wanted to say to you all day. I'll be you anytime, anywhere. The angel of death. <laughs> Now stay tuned as Gary Coleman stars as a 13-year-old college student who has to face the problems of campus social life. Robert Guillaume co-stars in The Kid with the 200 IQ on Channel 11 Sunday Movie Matinee, next. Oh, yeah. driving me crazy all afternoon. Now, uh, I need a break. I'm going up to the loft to try out my new earphones, okay? See if you can keep them out of mischief for a nanosecond. Sure, Dad. <laughs> Come on, big guy. Let's play some pool. That's my stereo. Cool, isn't it? Dad gave it to me for getting an A in math. A lot of long division went in that box. We'll see how it works. There's no one in there. It's a tape and it makes music. We dance to it, see? Check this out. See? Or, yeah. You got it! Alright, you look cool! Totally cool! Yeah, Harry! <laughs> Dance with lower life forms. Oh, yeah? Then what do you call that Martin Newt? You are a waste of skin. <laughs> Boy, I hope you don't have any sisters. No, don't do that. Hey, give that back to me. Give that back. Harry, you broke my stereo. How could you do that? Can't you be more careful? Oh, I hope I can fix it. That was very bad, Harry. Very bad. of the entire assembly and you're gonna die julie his fly was open <laughs> no 
I didn't see anything. Ugh, who'd want to anyway? I mean, he's the school principal. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> with an H, ends with an Ari. Hey, <laughs> can't you disappear somewhere? Hmm? Uh, Here, go on, get out of here. Ow! That was very bad. Very bad. Shoo! Shoo! Go, go! Get out of here. Go on. Get out of here. Because he's a wild, irrational animal who's not fit for civilization. What's going on? Harry's doing something in the loft. Well, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm going to stop it. Wait, Dad. You could be interfering with some mysterious Bigfoot ritual. It's called wanton destruction. <laughs> oh, it's a garbage dump. Nancy, he's turned my loft into a landfill here. Don't look at me. I'm not cleaning it up. I've reached my limit. What, were you raised by animals? Predictable. He even threatened you. He didn't mean it. Honey, we don't want Harry to get hurt either, but he could be dangerous. Hello, this is George Henderson. Is Officer Perth on duty? So, when I heard it was my favorite family calling, I told the sergeant I just couldn't wait to get here. Hey, we really appreciate that, Officer Perth, because <laughs> this is a matter of some, well... Delicacy. Delicacy. Oh, yeah. 
like the last time you thought you saw a big hairy monster in your backyard? <laughs> okay, what is it this time? Big, big hairy, hairy monster. monster. <laughs> Boy, you folks sure get the most out of your tax dollars. Well, Officer Perk, now this is really urgent. I don't know how else to say this, but, uh, well, we've had a Bigfoot living in our house. Yeah, and his name is Harry, and he's my best friend, but now he's run away. You need to find him because he was really angry when he left here and he could hurt somebody. He even grabbed the phone out of my hand. Yeah, but mostly he's just the sweetest living creature you'd ever hope to meet. Yeah. I mean, except for what happened today. So you all say you had a Bigfoot living here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, down at the station, we have a pamphlet. It's called The Dysfunctional Family. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Officer, we really appreciate that kind of psychological insight. I really, I do. But uh, it's not a question to I'll get our... it. Uh, Officer Perth, let's keep this to ourselves, all right? Oh, don't worry. I wouldn't mention this story to anyone. <laughs> George, I saw a police car. What is going on? Actually, Miss Glick, nothing is going on. A whole lot of nothing. Look, these people are having some mental difficulties. I'm going to make sure they get some help. <gasps> what a sensitive thing for a policeman to do. What an absolutely 90s story. Look, Samantha, this is our cop. Get your own cop. <laughs> I'm available for an interview. How about tomorrow? Great. A and I've got the perfect angle. On the surface, strong, macho cop. But underneath, the tender quivering soul of a woman. Actually, tomorrow's kind of full. Why, why don't I call you? Okay. Good night, folks. Good night. If they see him, they'll shoot him. Well, I was really worried. I mean, he's eight feet tall and angry. Somebody could get hurt. Mr. Henderson, with all due respect, if he was going to tear anyone to shreds, it would have been you. Well, you didn't see him. He was on a destructive rampage. I mean, take a look for yourself. Okay, I'll look. But I know Bigfoot, and there's no way he... Oh, my God. You have no idea what you've done, do you? What we've done? Well, it's... It's like, um, imagine you're out of town. You're in a strange place or something, a hotel. What's the first thing you do? Uh, sweat the little bottles of shampoo. George always said that you put out pictures of me and the kids. Oh. Exactly. You try to feel at home, to feel secure and safe. That's what Harry was doing with your furniture. It's, it's amazing. He was recreating his own environment. Right, like he's got an off-white and nubby couch in his forest. No, no, he was constructing a place for himself with the only things available. Building his nest just like the, like the tiny sparrow. <laughs> Give or take a few pounds. So what you're saying is that we made him feel unwelcome. So he ran away. Well, yeah, that's what I think happened. I shouldn't have yelled at him. Dad, we gotta find him. Harry and the Hendersons will be right back. Lens crafter. I followed the foothills all the way up to the tree line. There's still no sign of him. He didn't come back here either. I thought for sure he would come here if he knew I was waiting. Well, your mom and I checked all the parks. Oh, yeah. At 1 o'clock in the morning, there's nothing there but people making out. Mother, they don't call it making out anymore. Oh, really? What do they call it? Um, how should I know? <laughs> I should have come with you guys. I could have found him. I'd think like a Bigfoot. Oh, Ernie, come on. 
Wait, he might be onto something here. I mean, Ernie relates to him on a, on a very special level. Honey, you want to try a little experiment with me? Sure, Mom, if it'll help find Harry. Sit down here and get comfortable. And close your eyes, take a deep breath, and just kind of let your thoughts flow freely. My mother, Shirley McLean. Yeah, give her a chance, Sarah. Your mother's very good at this out-of-the-body stuff. I mean, last night she transported herself to Europe. Saved me a bundle on airfare. <laughs> All right, honey. Concentrate on Harry. And really get a picture of him in your mind's eye. I can see him, Mom. That's good. That's good. All right, let the picture just kind of come to you. See that it's Harry and he's lost. He's lonely. He's hungry. He's scared, Mom. Real scared. Stay back or I'll shoot. I said, hold it. Just leave the stereo there. I lost last week? I found it yesterday. Right under this very couch. Who cares about your old sock? I want Harry back. Yeah, I know you do, son. But even if he never comes back, you've had an experience that's changed your life forever. That's something to be thankful for. You don't really care. You never liked him anyways. No, I know I was never his biggest fan, but I... I can honestly say I'm lucky to have known him. Yeah, we were lucky, weren't we, George? <laughs> Don't get your hopes up. Good news never arrives this time of night. Officer Perth. I'm afraid I've got some upsetting news about your Bigfoot friend. Oh, Ernie, I'm real sorry. Seems he likes rap music. Harry! You're back! You're back! I can't believe it! Oh, look, he brought you a present, Ernie. Oh, thanks! This is a lot better than the one Dad brought me. Oh, yeah. You get a present, too. $800 for a stereo, and a plate glass window, and a strobe light, and an alarm box. What did he do, rob a store? Yes, he did. <laughs> and I was going to shoot him. Until he talked to me. And then we danced. <laughs> he led. Outstanding! Well, now I gotta go figure out what to say in my report. You're not gonna tell them about Harry, are you? 
Well, that all depends on what you're going to do with him. Well, the minute his wound is healed, we're returning him to the forest. Okay. Saves me a lot of paperwork. Wait, you got to swear you won't tell anybody about Harry. I swear, okay? That's not enough. you got to make a sign. I know. Sign of the age. For him. No, that's not an age. <laughs> it is in sign language. Oh. <laughs> now repeat after me. I swear I will not tell anybody about Harry. I swear I will not tell anybody about Harry. And if I do... And if I do... My bones will push through my skin and my <laughs> eyes will drop out of my head. I swear, okay? I didn't have to take an oath this big to become a cop. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. I don't think he'd be happier in the garage. Oh, honey, you can survive without your loft for a couple of days. Yeah, Dad, he'd do the same for you. Yeah, how do you know? Remember? I think like a Bigfoot. <laughs> Look how happy he is. Of course he is. Every living creature deserves his own place. <laughs> honey, do you remember what we did with Ernie the day we brought him back from the hospital? No. Oh, put him in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I spent my first night on earth in the bathroom. Yeah. Well, your nursery wasn't ready yet. Your dad hadn't converted his dark room for you. Yeah, well, I had to give up a hobby, but gained a son. Mm. Best trade I ever made. You remember that wallpaper you put up? Oh, with the little the yellow buses on it? With the wheels? The wheels on the, the bus. Go round and round and round and round and round. You guys must be real tired. Yeah, we are. Time to hit the hay, Ern. Uh, I'll be down in a minute. Good night. Harry, glad you're okay. Do me a favor, big guy. Don't ever run away again. Because when you're gone, I really miss you. Oh, you want music? I'll play some of Dad's. It'll put you to sleep. <laughs> Night, Harry. Don't fight the bed bugs. <laughs> Give your hat. Extra strength, Rolaids, antacid. Just trust most. Now stay tuned as Kermit, Miss Piggy, Fozzie, and the whole Muppet gang travel to London to solve a jewel heist in The Great Muppet Caper on the Sunday movie matinee next on Channel 11. estimate.